Good evening, friends, and welcome into the Bilo Center in Greenville, South Carolina for the 4A Boys Upper State Championship game. The winner of tonight's matchup between Gaffney and Dorman will move on to play for the state championship one week from tonight, Lexington and Aiken. The winner of that matchup tonight will get the winner of Gaffney and Dorman. My name is Emerson Phillips. My partner is Stacy Huff. And Stacy, we're ready for 4A Boys. Dorman is 25 and three. Gaffney comes in 21 and five. Two teams, two powerhouse teams. Again, Emerson, you don't get this far without putting up big numbers, but this Gaffney team features one of the better players in the state. He wears number 10, young man by the name of LJ Peak. Only a 10th grader, six foot four, 190 pounds, and all state selection. And I do believe the 4A player of the year as only a 10th grader. That's right, LJ Peak, number 10 for Gaffney. 4A player of the year, as named by the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association yesterday. Dorman coming in, trying to earn the right to move on to play for the state championship as well. They're 25 and three coming in. And we've got Gaffney coming in at 21 and five. Dorman is coached by Thomas Ryan. Ryan uh, played at Lexington High School. So there's a chance we could have a Dorman Lexington state final matchup with Thomas Ryan coaching against his mentor. Bailey Harris at Lexington, but obviously Mark Hoff, a multiple state championship winner as the head coach of this Gaffney program that has been one of the best in South Carolina over the last 10 years or more. Won a couple of championships for a young man that a lot of football fans know, young man by the name of Sidney Rice that went on to be a football great at the University of South Carolina now in the National Football League doing things on Sundays after, Sunday afternoons, but Sidney Rice and Mark Huff teamed up for a couple of state title runs uh, back in the early 2000s. Dorman was beaten in the Bilo Center last year. They lost to Irmo, which went on to win a 4A state championship. Gaffney beat Irmo in the third round of these playoffs. Just this week, Gaffney beat Irmo 59-58 to to end Irmo's hopes of back-to-back -back state championships. So it's Gaffney and Dorman, about as good as it gets in 4A boys for the upper state championship tonight. And we got eight minutes on the clock. Gaffney wearing black. As you see, the starters for Gaffney, Number 10, LJ Peak. Number 11, Cobby McDowell. Number 14, Quinshad Davis, the North Carolina Tar Heel football commitment. It was a Shrine Bowl wide receiver this year for the Gaffney football team. That's Quinshad Davis wearing number 14. 22 is Michael Wright. And number 31, Kerry Williams, also starting for Gaffney. For Dorman, it's number four, Maurice Daniels. Number 10, All State selection, Curtis Webb. Number 13, Kavon Dover. Number 20, Trey Robinson. And number 22, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. Gaffney in black, Dorman in white with the blue trim. We're underway at the Bilo Center. 4A Boys Upper State Championship. Semifinal round of the South Carolina High School Basketball State Playoffs. Turnaround shot in the post would not go down for Quinshot Davis. And now Dorman has it going the other way with number four, Maurice Daniels. This is Dover. Dover with a couple of dribbles and a kick into the corner. A head fake and a rise in a 16-footer, no good. Backside rebound, Ray Robinson. Robinson goes back up with it and was not able to hit. And it's LJ Peak out of there with it for Gaffney. Gaffney tried to feed the post, deflected away and stolen away. Maurice Daniels with a layoff left side. And the foul occurred on the floor. So no basket for Dorman. That was a nice... Uh, push ahead by the point guard that time for Dorman High School number four, Maurice Daniels. Good job. He's really, this man is quick. Made a nice pass, but the foul was right before the act of shooting, but I like the way they forced the tempo early. Inbounds pass and a travel call. Got the feet tangled up. Did Trey Robinson, and he was called for the travel. Nice tempo to this game. Both teams on attack. Let's watch Quinn Shaw Davis, the football player you spoke about, number 14 for Gaffney. They went to him early, first possession of the ball game. Let's see if they're going to try to take advantage of his height inside. Gaffney drove it in with number 11, Cobby McDowell, and a Dorman foul. I beg your pardon, Dorman knocked it out of bounds, so Gaffney will lob it into Quinshaw Davis. Davis headed to Chapel Hill to play football. Off to LJ Peak, the 4A player of the year. Peak had it taken away. Pass in front to Daniels for the, oh, he missed the layup. Oh, he missed the bunny. 
And now Davis out of there with it for Gaffney. Into the front court for Michael Wright. He'll put up an air ball from 15. Out of bounds off of Dorman, so Gaffney keeps it. A frenetic pace early on. Still no score, minute and a half gone by. It is a frenetic pace, though. They're up and down. Love the athleticism of both these teams. So Peak inbounds to Wright. Wright back to Peak, and Peak called for Walt. Well, <laughs> Feet got a little ahead of the rest of his body that time, but they call a lot of travels in high school basketball, man. They try to teach those fundamentals and get the kids playing the game the right way. This is Curtis Webb bringing it up for Dorman, All-State player, 16 points a ball game. Outstanding student as well at Dorman High. He's picked up by number 11, Cobby McDowell. Webb drives in, had that shot blocked by Quinshaw Davis. The outlet to Wright. Wright going in with the left hand. Yes, sir. Love it. Fundamentally sound. Michael Wright used the rim as a protector. Got the ball up with that left hand off the glass. And on the other end, Dorman answers with Kavon Dover. That's a hard shot to make. You rarely see it nowadays. Remember, so that was about an eight-footer. Soft. Spin by Davis out to Peak. Peak put up an air ball. And it's the guard, Maurice Daniels, high off the floor to control. He'll get it to Arcega Whiteside. And that loose ball plucked out of the air by Kerry Williams for Gaffney. Winshaw Davis had it. Oh, had the pocket picked clean by Trey Robinson. And that'll lead to a dormant layup. Yes, it's good by number 13, Kavon Dover. Kavon Dover, young man with four early points in the ball game. Shy Davis. Davis off the window and good. Put it high off the glass. Yeah, he's a big part of their, their attack, Emerson. They like going inside with him and letting them get those quick shots up in the paint. And they crash the boards. Tied at four. Curtis Webb passes it over. Arcega white side. Drove left baseline, and then he was called for the foul going after his own miss. All right, J.R. Sega Whiteside is a 6'3 freshman, only a freshman. Now have to check into that just make sure if he's related to Valerie Whiteside, the girls coach at Dorman High School. Look at this nice power dribble with the left hand. I believe the kid is left-handed, but still goes half the window that time. All very fundamentally sound. That was the first points of the ball game scored by Gaffney's Michael Wright, a 6'2 senior. And this is L.J. Peak call for travel. Oh, they called the charge on that. Right, charging call. Don't know. Inter interesting call. They got call. Peak for the charge. So two fouls on Gaffney, one on Dorman early on. New guard into the game for Dorman is Brandon Pinckney, number five. He's controlling here for the Cavaliers. This is Arcega white side. Beautiful backdoor lob pass for the alley -oop to Pinckney. It's a set play. Both teams well coached once again. Thomas Ryan drew that up, and they, just like in practice, well executed play. Now Gaffney with T. Hardy. Left wing pass for McDowell. McDowell pivoting, puts up a tough shot, put it up short. Nice rebound for Gaffney by Kerry Williams. And a loose ball on the floor taken out of there by Curtis Webb. Webb, no look pass. Bouncer through the lane. Beautiful basketball by the Dorman Cavaliers. Amavi Draper, number 33, with a beautiful no look pass that time. A touch pass, diagonal at that. Loved the way they turned out. And I tell you what, this team, they like getting the ball inside the paint and attacking the glass. We have a chance for a high scoring ball game tonight. Eight to four, the Dorman lead. Peak finds a curling. Cobby McDowell who had it stripped away and now Pinckney goes the other way. Pinckney's pass stolen away on a leaping effort by Hardy and how about a two-hand jam by L.J. Peak. Sometimes you gotta get up to get down Emerson and L.J. Peak got up that time for the throwdown. Steal right here by McDowell, the flip and a clean swat by Dorman. That's some good defensive work right there by Dorman's Trey Robinson. A clean swipe as Gaffney went up for what appeared to be an easy layup. Thoroughbred athletes all over the floor for both teams, though. Great athleticism on display right here. 
Now Dorman with an eight to six lead. Top key three, Arcego Whiteside. Great form, that's again a, a set play. Dorman running the offense very crisply. And you can tell it by the 14-6 score. Norman has quickly opened up an eight-point lead here late in the first quarter. This is L.J. Peak. Peak got tripped up. Yeah, he got to feet. Stepped on somebody's foot that time. He's fortunate not to get hurt on that. A lot of times you see a player step on a foot there and twist an ankle. But take a look right here to set play. Down screen for a single white side. He rolls to the top of the key and nobody home. Hand down, man down. We've all heard that before. And good looking shot by the ninth grader, though. Great form. Right, 11 to 6 our score. I read it wrong earlier. It's 11 to 6, Dorman. Tough shot right there by Michael Wright. Yeah, we, we were saying 14 earlier and it, it was changed. So 11 to 8 in favor of Dorman. Coming up on two minutes left in quarter number one. Emerson Phillips with Stacy Huff. Glad you're with us tonight for the Upper State Championships. We got six more games on tap tomorrow. A uh, bucket by Brandon Pinckney working baseline. Great attack, man. Great aggression that time. Went off high off the window with the right hand, got it over the shot blocker. 13 to 8, the Dorman advantage. Wright's got it on the wing, over over the baseline for a 17 footer that would not drop for Keenan Littlejohn but an offensive board and a runner that dances home for number 12, T. Hardy. T. Hardy got that one teed off and up and in. Neither team has shy players on there, but everyone on both teams have the ability to score and are willing to shoot the basketball. Sometimes you'll see a guy who kind of hires on offense, but all five on each one of these teams will attack the rim. Daniels hands off to Pinckney. Pinckney had it swatted away by McDowell, but Pinckney onto the sideline to collect and back to Maurice Daniels. Fancy dribbling. Drawing the foul, two shots for Daniels. Maurice Daniels, a very aggressive point guard at 5'8", a junior. But he saw a crack in the defense. And again, as I said earlier, Dorman wants to attack. Take a look here at T. Hardy. They, hey, they kind of forced him into the paint. He took it. You take a little eight, eight foot hook shot. That's not a bad shot. Get his up and in with the teardrop. And a swish by Maurice Daniels at the foul line. Josh Black. Number 14, sporting the beard tonight into the ball game for Dorman, along with uh, 33, Amavi Draper. Got a little cabbage going on there, 14 there, Josh Black. See Black at the top of the screen there. This is Daniels, two for two at the foul line for a 15 to 10 Dorman lead. Gaffney beaten by Burns in the first round of the state playoffs a year ago. Stacy, a real shocker as Peak rises up and cans it from 19 feet. That was just call my own number and rise up, rise and fire. Good looking form there by LJ Peak. He's a very mature body control wise for a 10th grader. Really good looking athlete. Peak with the long two to cut the Dorman lead to three points. Final minute of the first quarter. Around the perimeter it goes to Maurice Daniels. Up top now, Josh Black. Black, a six-foot junior, gives it back to Daniels, another junior. A hole for one here with 15 seconds. Down to 12 seconds. Now 10. Daniels looking over at head coach Thomas Ryan. Going to go to work on Quinshaw Davis. The double clutch hit the bottom of the rim. Quinshaw Davis defending, and Dorman unable to get a shot off before the horn after Kavon Dover collected that loose ball in the corner. End of one quarter of play here in the Upper State Championship game for 4A boys. It's Dorman leading Gaffney 15 to 12. A trip to Columbia is on the line. We'll be right back. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the SCHSL network, go to schsl.tv slash sb.
back live in Greenville, South Carolina, the Bilo Center, the site of tonight's 4A Upper State Championships. We've got 1A, 2A, and 3A for both the girls and boys coming up tomorrow. Six games in a row beginning at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and now we have we have a timeout as uh, the eight minutes have not been put on the clock in the in the arena, Stacy. So we, we had to have the officials <laughs> blow the whistle and stop the game after the inbound pass was made to put eight minutes on the clock. That's what we've done. It's been a rough night at the scorers' table tonight. Yes, it has. <laughs> 15 to 12, Dorman as we start the second quarter. Behind the back dribble here by Dorman's Curtis Webb. Now it's Dover. Dover with a jump pass inside for Draper. Draper turns, had it rattle out on the bank. Kept alive by Dover. His shot wouldn't go. Peak forced out of bounds. And a foul on Dorman. Loose ball foul. Pretty physical ball game, though. A lot of, a lot of collisions early. Three team fouls apiece early in the second quarter. Peak guarded by Curtis Webb. Peak rising up over Webb, put it up strong. Nice rebound by Maurice Daniels. But he'll be called for the travel. Says he landed with possession and then appeared to jump away from his own man. He was tied up with Draper, yeah. and on that little hop step, they called him for steps. Yeah, he did. I thought he might let him get away with that, but he's, small. he's only 5'8". He went up against a bigger teammate. His teammate allowed him to catch the, get the rebound there, and he had to gather himself when he landed, and that did cause defeat to shove. It was, it was an ac accurate call. Yeah, I think had he, had he taken his hands off of it and made that little jump step, he'd have been fine, but because he had possession exactly. and made the, the little short jump step, to get his feet uh, untied from Drapers. They called him for the travel, and the officials at the high school level at the high school level are sticklers for the rules. Exactly. They call it tight. They, they really do. Especially uh, fundamental plays, traveling, shot blocks. Uh, they really call a tight game with regard to those, those two areas in particular. The traveling calls, when there's any doubt, Stacy, the refs will blow that whistle. Every time. And uh, we often see... Uh, a quick whistle on a shot block attempt as well. If the arm comes down on a shot block attempt, almost all the time at the high school level, you'll get a whistle and a foul. That's a charge right there. That's another one that you're going to see. There's all, rarely a no call on a collision like that, and that was a pretty bad one. Quinshot Davis now, uh, 14, he's got a little limp. Uh, I think he was involved in that last collision. Got a, got a little slight limp there come, coming back down the floor. The foul that time went against Dorman. Peak to right into the corner for Davis. Right guarded by Pinckney on the wing. Up top now for LJ Peak. Short pass to Hardy. Peak lobs it elbow for Davis who jumps and passes. And that shot drops off the front of the rim, but tipped up and in Peak. Raising the hand to take credit for it. Yeah, it was a deflection, I believe, but good diagonal pass by Quinshot Davis that time. High, low feed. It was a good idea. The basket just didn't go on the original attempt, but they continue to crash the boys. Gaffney gets a lot of their plays on missed shots. Um, they like to attack the offensive glass. Stacy, it's the third meeting this year between Gaffney and Dorman, and Dorman has won the first two meetings. They met back on November 29th. It was Gaffney's season opener. Thanksgiving. Uh, week game. It was Dorman's fourth game of the year, but it was Gaffney's first game of the season. That was at Gaffney. Dorman won 63-49, and then just a few days later on December the 9th, Dorman won the rematch in Spartanburg 53-47. So they have met twice, but not since very early in the regular season. Yeah, this is obviously a different Gaffney team. They've come on late, and I doubt that people knew that they were going to have a 10th grader be one of the best players in the state early in the season when they play. Got a good look at Thomas Ryan, the head coach from Dorman. Win shot, Davis with right hand damage. He can really explode off the floor. And Gaffney has its second lead. They led early two to nothing. 
And Dorman answers on the other end with number 20, Trey Robinson. Number 22, good pass that time by J.J. Osega Whiteside. He has a great basketball IQ for a ninth grader. Good pass that time. You know, I'm a former point guard. I love the passes. <laughs> Two ties and three lead changes already in this ball game. Peak stepped into the lane and passed it to Davis. And I believe they got Dorman with a foul on T. It'll be on Josh Black, his first. Team fifth, three fouls on Gaffney. So Davis will inbound baseline to our left. LJ Peaks doing a good job of penetrating and getting to the paint. That time he penetrated the pass. I think as the game goes on, you'll see him start to penetrate the score uh, more for the Gaffney Indians. Really nice turnout for this 4A Upper State Championship between Gaffney and Dorman. Quinn shot, Davis going to work inside. His vertical leap is just to a point where he's getting up and over anybody on Dorman's team right now. They got to get the ball out of his hands in the paint. Gaffney called for a foul. They'll get number 12, T. Hardy. That's his first and the fourth foul on Gaffney. Gaffney trying to pressure the basketball, Stacy. It cost him a foul on that exchange. Yes, it did. Gaffney plays a lot of underclassmen. They have about five seniors on the team, but the main one that plays is Quinshot Davis. Beautiful shot by number 13, Kavon Dover. He's not bashful. He's looked at, he looks to score. He has a really good shot there. He's one of the leaders of this dormant team on offense. Another lead change. And Dorman back in front by one, midway through the second quarter. Peak picked up by Arcega Whiteside. And this is Williams with a spin move and a right hand yes, around the rim and down for Kerry Williams. Nice play. Yeah, 6-2 junior. Nice soft touch with the right hand inside the paint. Kerry Williams doing the damage there for Gaffney. And on the other end, Dorman with another bucket by Kavon Dover. Kavon Dover smooth, man. Silky smooth. With the offense, he gets the shot up. Back and forth we go. Six lead changes now already in this ball game. 22 right, picked up by 22, Arcega Whiteside. Peek lobs it over to right. Right thought about the three, thought better of it. Peek will hoist the three. Peek too strong on the three. Right battles, and he caught, he kept it alive. He got it to quick shot Davis who scored. It was a really good job boxing out by Kavon Dover, but the ball just didn't come down in a spot where he could get his hands on it. And that little crack left the opening for Gaffney. I tell you, they get a lot of points on offensive putbacks. Credit Wright and Davis for working together to get that bucket for the Gaffney Indians. So here's Dorman with Maurice Daniels, guarded by T. Hardy. Daniels leans in, put it up short from six feet. Peek's got it. Peek with the pink tips here at the by low center. And that pass off the hand of Kerry Williams. Looked like a pretty good throw there, Stacey. I'm impressed with his court vision. Let's take a look, another trip down the floor earlier. Kavon Dover gets up high. He really elevates for that jumper. Good shot there. But LJ Peek has great court vision. He's 6'4". He's going to be a point guard. And he really showed great touch on that last play there. Another little put back by Kerry Williams right there. That's Quinshawn Davis using his vertical leap at the paint. Travel call here as we rejoin the action. Turn it over to Gaffney. Gaffney is basically ridden offensive rebounds to come back and take the lead. They were down at one point by, I believe, six points. Now they're up by one. But they've actually pounded the glass. And watch, they put the ball up off the glass and just go get it. Gaffney trailed by as many as five on two occasions. Five, excuse me. Right now, Gaffney leads by one. They got the basketball. Right, three-pointer. Good rotation. Yes, sir. Splash. Out. Beautiful rotation on that shot by Michael Wright. And hey, that was a right-hand jumper, so the young man is ambidextrous out there in the court a little bit. And that was number 20 for Dorman, Trey Robinson, who's played well here in the first half. Another one of those juniors. Nine juniors on the Dorman team. Right, with a lackadaisical pass, but Davis able to keep it for Gaffney. His shot too strong. And it is Brandon Pinckney 
with the pass in front for Webb for three. Nice shot by Curtis Webb, a 6'2 senior guard. That spot's been good for him. That's about the third jumper Durham has made from that same spot. And Gaffney surrenders the lead, nearly a three-point chance for Kerry Williams. But that shot would not drop off of the bank, and here's that three by Curtis Webb. Yeah, he rolls up, out of the control. Nobody had a hand up until it was too late. He just kind of glided into that three that time. Again, not a lot of shot players out here. These teams all recognize scoring opportunities, and I love to see that. That's very mature. Showed that both these teams are well coached, and they trust their offense. Kerry Williams knocks down that first foul shot. A good look at Kerry. He's an 11th grader, 6 feet 2 inches tall. Thick young man. Gives us our third tie. See if he can break the tie. And he does. Three ties and nine lead changes here in the first half. Now they're shortened. There we go. Boy, we've had problems with the score and the clock tonight. But the uh, everything's correct right now. 27-26 Gaffney. Dorman with the bank shot, Brandon Pinckney off the window. Nice teardrop, use a little glass that time. The glass is your friend. Why not use it? Clock's, got clock hitting is, the arena is not moving. Yeah, it looks yeah. like about 19 seconds did not go off the clock. It's been a rough night at the scorer's table. Referee there, recognize that gentleman there from Chick-fil-A and other, other tournaments we've seen. Good, ref, good referee crew we have here tonight. But getting it straight. 110 is what's on the clock right now. Should be about 57, I believe, according to what we had here. But nothing wrong with a bonus basketball. That's fine. Now, now the clock's counting up. <laughs> the clock in the, in the building is counting up. It started at 110 and went up to 120. <laughs> we got to get it straight. We need to get somebody this. Boy, somebody tell the scorer's table is championship weekend, baby. Championship weekend. <laughs> the round goes higher and higher. Let's yeah, look we, at it right there. One says 110 there, but it went up to 120 during the last play. Both teams have been summoned to their bench. To the respective benches while yeah. this is straightened out. We got the uh, the shot of the clock. It literally started counting up. <laughs> and the fans noticed <laughs> it and got the attention of the officials. A Emerson, you and I have seen a few games. <laughs> I've, I've never seen that? seen that. I've never seen that either. Never seen the clock. A curiouser and curiouser. Up instead of down, yeah. That's yeah, quite curious. <laughs> <laughs> so after the uh, brief delay here, we're hoping to get all these kinks ironed out tonight. We could be here all night at this rate. I've been coming here for the Upper State Championship games for many years. We've never had this many problems in an entire weekend as what we've had so far tonight. So we'll hope that we can get everything straightened out. Back to the action. Final minute of the first half. Right. Can't connect from right three. And I believe they'll get Gaffney over the back. They will. 15. Yeah. What a solid job rebounding. I mean, boxing out by number 10. Curtis Webb, number 10 there for Dorman. Just an excellent job of block, uh, blocking out that time. Keenan Littlejohn called for the personal, and you're right, that was textbook blocking out. And the only way Littlejohn was going to get that rebound was to go over the back of Curtis Webb, and now we have a blocking foul called. You see the official. I think one thought about a travel at that time, and one thought about block. So. The official giving us the block signal there. There's the block. And 16 fouls is Mark Hoff, the Gaffney head coach. Been around for a while. Looks on, calling the next uh, play here for Gaffney, calling the defense. Six fouls on Dorman, six fouls on Gaffney, so both teams in the bonus on the next foul. Boy, nearly banked home the three, did <laughs> our Sega Whiteside, and with the ball on the floor, what's the call? A loose ball foul again, I believe there. Maybe on 33. It'll be one in one situation here for, for Gaffney. 
Look like LJ Peak Everson's going to get a chance to make one to make one. So here's Peak, the 10th grader, and a third year varsity player at Gaffney High School. Stacey, you remember he played a good minutes for Gaffney when he was in the eighth grade three yeah. years ago. Yeah, that's strong. Baseline move, shot partially blocked by Q Davis. The rebound, the outlet to Peak. Peak, two hand thunder. Yes, sir. That is a chin up by the sophomore. Arcega Whiteside passes into the front court for Amavi Draper. Now it's Webb looking at the clock. He sees 10 seconds. He's guarded by LJ Peak. Great matchup right here. Long three. Webb back iron. Rebounded by Gaffney. Little John pulled down the board. And we will head to the locker room for halftime with Gaffney on top of Dorman. 29 to 28. Anybody's ball game through the first 16 minutes of play. Stacy Huff, good matchup as advertised. Gaffney and Dorman for the 4A boys upper state title. It's going to be a good one. Can't wait. The second half is going to be off the chain. All right, we'll get a break and we'll come back with the start of the second half. Gaffney by one here at halftime on the South Carolina High School League Network. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. We're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the SCHSL network, go to schsl.tv slash sb.
halftime in a 4A boys upper state championship game. Gaffney leading Dorman 29-28. This is the third meeting this year between these two clubs. Gaffney fell to Dorman in each of the first two meetings, but they came early in the season. Big first half, Stacy for Kavon Dover for Dorman. That's him shooting a jumper right there. Nice soft touch there. You see them pushing the tempo as they did the whole first half. That's Dover again. Uh, you've seen four of his eight points as he leads the way with eight points. And LJ Peak has eight also for Gaffney. Young man we heard a lot about coming in here. Sophomore, all-state selection. And JJ uh, Sega Whiteside with a big jumper there. And then number 10, Curtis Webb. Number 31, Kerry Williams, a forward for Gaffney, had some big plays. And Quinshy Davis with eight points also. Was tied for the leading score in the first half. Three big jumper by Michael Wright. Yeah, that's right for three. And now we got Curtis Webb answering with a three on the other end for Dorman. So it's a one-point ball game. Nip and tuck back and forth in the first half. Three ties and ten lead changes in the first half. Gaffney wearing black. Dorman wearing white with the Columbia blue trim. And the third quarter of play is underway here in Greenville. Halftime at the Florence Civic Center tonight. Lexington leads Aiken 15 to 11. I just get inside that text as well. And interesting. A drive and a score by LJ Peak. He's got 10 to lead all scores. I said in the first half, he penetrate, he's penetrating at will. He did it to pass the first half. Second half, I figured he'd look for his own offense. And then you saw it on the first play out of the gate. I think he'll get into the paint and create some havoc here in the third quarter. Three-point lead for Gaffney to open the second half. Arcega white side to a curling Curtis Webb. Webb had it stripped away by LJ Peak and a foul. I believe they got Gaffney for the foul here. Quinshaw Davis questioning that call. Not sure who it was called on. Looked like Gaffney had made the steal. Arcega white side left alone on the inbound, but he could not bank it in from six feet. So Gaffney controls Cobby McDowell, the junior point guard. Brings it up for the Indians. Lob it inside for Quinshaw Davis, future Tar Heel football player, headed to play at North Carolina. What a great uh, senior season Quinshaw Davis had as a wide receiver for the Gaffney football team, which lost in the state championship game to Burns over in Clemson. That was an upset. Jumper no good from the left wing, saved from going out. And now the official corrects himself and points in the other direction. It will remain Gaffney's ball. Gaffney fans are vociferous. That's the word I would use there. Peak lobs it out to Davis. Back to Peak. Peak changes directions quickly, put it up short. Follow up and in by Kerry Williams. The clean up man, Kerry Williams, always around the offensive glass. As I stated earlier, they get a lot of their points off those second chance points. Now Arcega Whiteside goes by Williams. Pretty good defense by Williams. And Dorman he, he, stepped out of bounds with it. He was out of bounds when he shot. He never established himself. You have to establish position in bounds before you touch the basketball. And Arcega Whiteside came back and got the rebound, but he flew in from out of bounds to touch the ball, and you can't do that. Largest lead for Gaffney now, five points. Davis sets a screen for McDowell. Oh, tough shot. He was trying to draw a foul. and was in a, throwing the ball up was an afterthought, and it went in. First Pre real shot, he's taking the whole game. Pressure now from the Indians. And a 30-second timeout taken by Dorman head coach Thomas Ryan. He was quick off of the Dorman bench, tapped himself on the shoulders and said, let me get a timeout. Yes. Not getting out of hand quite yet, but seven points. And remember, Dorman was up by as much as five twice. Kyle McDowell, watch this now. He tries to draw the foul. He thought he was going to get a whistle, so when he feels this contact, watch him just throw the ball up. He just threw the ball up just trying to see him get an and one. Got it up the glass from a peculiar angle. Kind of a, kind of a smelly looking play, but it, it counts. Did hit the window, didn't it? At some point. 35 28, <laughs> Gaffney. with a 6-0 spurt to open the second half. So 
Bowman inbounds to Maurice Daniels. Now it's Trey Robinson who had six points in the first half. Daniels puts it up and that one rattled out and then back in. That's Daniels. Tried to pop out, but it went down for Daniels. Now right guarded tightly by Arcega Whiteside. Skip it to Peak. Peak with an awkward right hand shot, but look at him go to work and follow his miss. That's just when you're just out athleting people when you know you're that's a pure athletic talent. He just threw the ball up and went and got it himself, and nobody else could jump the second time with him. Now a kick into the corner for Arcega Whiteside. His three came up short. And a whistle and a foul. They got Gaffney for the foul. Kerry Williams called for the personal. He, you know, he didn't box out the shooter initially, and then he tried to box him out as a single white side tried to go around him. That's when the body contact came into play. And Gaffney with a steal on the inbound. Davis took it away and gets it over to Kavi McDowell. Lob pass for Kerry Williams. Swatted, but a foul called on Dorman. Excellent dunk down pass that time by number 22, Michael Wright. 6'2 guard, he's a senior. Good hands that time, also about 31, Kerry Williams. Did a good job drawing the foul. Tough pass to make. Kerry Williams has played well tonight. You know, not a player who is going to steal a lot of headlines for Gaffney High School playing alongside LJ Peak and Quinshaw Davis but a very solid role player Stacy who does a lot of the little things that don't show up in the box score. Exactly every team needs that every championship type team has a guy like that on the team. He defends he boxes out he's a good rebounder. Set screens. And can score when the opportunity presents itself. Head fake by Peak who slashes to the bucket and he was fouled on the floor. They got him on the floor, so that'll be the second foul on Dorman. We have two fouls on Gaffney here in the second half. And an 8-2 Gaffney run to open the second half of play. Make it a 10-2 run on that lob pass into Quinshaw Davis. It's too easy. You can't allow that lob that close to the basket from out of bounds play. Now Dorman with Curtis Webb up top for Daniels. Over to Pinckney. Pinckney guarded by McDowell. Popping up top is 33 Draper. In the left corner, this is Webb. Webb guarded by LJ Peak. Webb dribbles in, sends it out to Daniels. Three pointer, no. Peak cuffed it, but lost it to McDowell. Stacy in the first game tonight, the Dutch Fort girls opened the second half with a 10-2 run to break open what had been a relatively close game. And now Gaffney with the same run, a 10-2 run to open the second half and open up a bigger lead. Tripped up, Dorman. That little entry. Tommy McDowell grabbing his ankle. Number 11 there, writhing in pain there. He fell awkwardly, got his feet tangled up. The Dorman player. And McDowell is clutching the back of his right heel, grabbing the Achilles there. Stacy. He looks to be in tremendous pain. And he will receive some medical attention here with 336 left in quarter number three. Gaffney trying to defeat Dorman for the first time in three meetings this year, although we pointed out that two meetings came very early in the regular season for both teams. Yeah, definitely. And, again, a lot changes in basketball from November or even December until you get to February, March. It's a different climb. You get in that region of play, you kind of discover who, you, who some of your players are going to be. And I think this matchup here has got all the makers of a very close one. I just hope the young man is okay down there. Let's look at a coming up schedule there. Championship weekend next Friday and Saturday at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, the capital city. It'll be the site of all the championship games. We'll have two games on Friday night. You see the two 4A games, 7 o'clock tip for the girls, 
8.30 tip for the boys. Dutch Fork and Orangeburg-Wilkinson, the matchup in the 4A girls title game next Friday night. And then a big weekend of championship basketball. Eight games on tap next weekend. And you can watch them all live here on the South Carolina High School League Network. Live streaming available online. And we'll also have TV coverage through Time Warner Cable. Check your local TV listings to find out what channel that game will be on. All these games will be on in your area. So McDowell helped off for the floor. He did leave under his own power. And Gaffney with Michael Wright. Coming up with a loose ball. Gaffney has his largest lead. And they're on offense looking for more. LJ Peak. Now it's Davis in the corner, double team. Got it inside, Terry Williams. That's just a good baseline pass there. Good hands by Williams. Just good patience that time by Gaffney. Nice crossover dribble there by Daniels who jumped and passed. And they got Gaffney for a foul and the Indians fans are starting to howl. Yeah, they really are. They're getting a really emotional behind us right here. And take a look right here at that baseline pass out of a double team. Terry Williams right down the baseline to secure the ball and get it up on the glass. But that last play, Gaffney in disbelief that a foul was called there. But, you know, let's talk about Dorman a little bit. Dorman got a lot of shots up on the rim in the first half. They're not doing so much right here. They're not getting the shots up, not running the offense quite as crisp as they did in the first half. A 12-2 Gaffney run here in the third quarter, and that breaks the run. Webb on a nice pull-up jumper from 14 feet. Our senior shall lead them. Only one of two seniors that they'll lose off this team going into the next season. So Curtis Webb would be a senior to stop the drought for Dorman. Kick out to Peak. He nearly lost it, but collects and steps in, lays it off, and a pull-up 12-footer blocked. Beautiful defensive work by 13, Kavon Dover from Dorman, and a Tied possession is the call here. Jump ball on the alternate possession will go over to Dorman. There's a senior there with two men on him, hand in his face. Curtis Webb gets the jumper to go to 6'2 senior. And that pulls them within nine now, but still that's a, a lead as large as any Gaffney's had. Dorman really has to ignite something right now. There's Webb again. Webb, yes sir, Curtis Webb. He's responding. Senior again. Curtis Webb, a 16-point per game scorer during the season. He also had 43 steals on the year to lead Dorman High School. And Peak call for a walk. He has a very quick split, uh, first step, very explosive. He's going to have problems in high school with that, but in college, he'll get away with it. And this kid will play in college, folks. There's going to be a line at his door starting any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> right about now. Yeah, that's right. LJ Peak, much ballyhooed, 4A player of the year. Curtis Webb banks it too strong. Showtime. Peak flying in, had him stripped away on a beautiful defensive play by Brandon Pinkney. All ball there, Stacy. that's a good call. That was a good call there, I tell you what. A good people, no call. Yeah, people still, yeah, right, good play, good hands. People standing up in anticipation. I think LJ Peak was trying to make a highlight reel right there if he didn't get that ball stripped away. So the Gaffney Indians 21 and five on the year with a seven point lead over Dorman. Dorman 25 and three coming in. Zone played right now by, by Dorman. They're trapping out of the zone. This is Michael Wright turning with the right hand and drawing a foul. Slight move to his left and then pivoted quickly and strongly back to the right to draw the foul. But that's a good example of a guard who's ready to play in the post. Though. He caught the ball in the post. He had a, a move in mind. That's what I mean. But both these teams have players who are ready to score when scoring opportunities present themselves. And a shooting foul here for Michael Wright. He knocked down the first shot, 42-34. 
And Wright's got himself one more here. Michael Wright wearing 22 for the Gaffney Indians. Two for two on that trip for 22, Wright. Nine point lead again. Gaffney's largest lead has been 11. 120 to play in the third quarter and contact away from the basketball. A foul coming up on Gaffney. Quinshaw Davis got a piece of Curtis Webb who was trying to curl around the screen into the lane. He, said he had him saddled up that time and was riding him. Got to call that, that foul. Thomas Ryan continuing to coach hard from the Dorman bench. Daniels to inbound for the Cavs. Into Pinckney. Pinckney picked up by Teandre Smith in for the first time tonight. And there's Kerry Williams, another rebound. A long outlet to T. Hardy. Hardy had it stolen away by Arcega Whiteside. And now on the other end, a rise up and hit the net, and that's all. And a foul on Dorman Webb. Hedged Michael Wright out of bounds, and they got Webb for the personal. Yeah, that was just an ill-advised shot that time by Maurice Daniels. Every shot that feels good isn't a good shot. Again, Thomas Ryan right now has got to corral his team, and he's a great coach over there, and he's got to get them to run their sets and get better shots now because it's getting critical going into the fourth quarter again in a moment. Can't let it be a double-digit lead going too deep in this ball game against a good Gaffney team. DeAndre Smith, 32, controlling right now for Gaffney. Gets it to right, right double, didn't like it, got the timeout call, and Gaffney will get the 30-second timeout with 45 seconds left in the third quarter. The Gaffney lead is nine. Yeah, again, right now you're going to see the defensive intensity pick up because, again, Dorman's a good, well-coached team. They've done some things that they like. They've had some spurts in the ballgame, Emerson, where they were able to frustrate Gaffney a little bit and create some turnovers. A couple of charging calls, a couple of traveling calls. So they're going to go back to some of those things that worked in the first half. But what, Gaff, what you're going to see Gaffney do is continue to put the ball up on the backboard and just go get it. They've been pounding the boys with Quinshot Davis, with Kerry Williams, and even with L.J. Peak, the 10th grader, they've been pounding the boards and getting second-chance opportunities, and you can't give a good team three or four shots on one end of the floor. It's going to catch up to you, and that's what's happened. That's the difference in the nine-point lead for Gaffney. Dutch Fort girls have already punched their ticket to Columbia. They'll take on Orangeburg-Wilkinson for the 4A state championship one week from tonight. That'll be at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. Double team, and what's the call? They got a foul on Dorman. That's what I mean. They like that, that trap. They get Gaffney to pick the ball up in the right places. You can't pick your dribble up right there. They had them where they wanted them, but the foul got called. But Gaffney's got to be careful. Other than Peak, they got players that are now who don't seem sure with the basketball. 23 for Gaffney. Is O'Brien Davidson getting his first action tonight as well. And Mark Huff has gone to his bench after McDowell was injured earlier here in the third. Peak to right. Back to Peak with 20 seconds left in the quarter. LJ Peak slashing in. Finger roll! Beautiful. Wave it off. That's going to be a blocking foul, I do believe. They call they a, a charge and no basket for Peak. Uh, interest, an interesting call. He floated, though, hung in the air. Beautiful finger roll, and they got him for the player control foul. So Dorman's got it back with 16 seconds left. Here's Maurice Daniels. Daniels over to Webb for three. Oh, it popped out. Tip up. Yes. Nice follow. There's that man again. Number 20, Trey Robinson, Emerson. And a foul here. I believe they got Curtis Webb for the personal. They did. Webb called for the foul. That's his second. I uh, beg your pardon, his fourth. That's big. That is big. Uh, still three seconds left in the third, and Dorman's top scorer, Curtis Webb, will leave the ball game with four personal fouls. Pass into Peak. Peak with the half court heave. Good if it goes, and off the window, but and the clock Didn't never start started again. again. It's been a rough night at the scores table. Been a long night at the scores table. Still 2.5 yeah. according to the score. There's a lot happen for one second to go off the clock. Well, the officials have said that's the end of the third quarter, so they're going to put zeros on that third quarter clock, and we will get set for the start of the fourth quarter of play. 43-36 as we get a look at a tough shot by 
Tommy McDowell from Gaffney High School. Fourth quarter is coming up here on the South Carolina High School League Network. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the SCHSL network, go to schsl.tv slash sb. We're back in Greenville for the fourth quarter of the 4A Boys Upper State Championship. Gaffney with a 12-2 run to open the third quarter to take this lead into the fourth. 43-36, Gaffney on top. Gaffney only led by one point at halftime. That's not Kerry Williams' game right there shooting that, that three. 14-8. Gaffney outscores Dorman in the third. And were it not for a couple of Curtis Webb jumpers late in that third quarter, the deficit could be more for Dorman. But Webb had to leave with three seconds left in the third when he picked up his fourth personal foul. But he's back in now. This is him, short from three. The rebound to McDowell, who was injured earlier, but is back in the game now. When Sean Davis out of control, LJ Peak picks it up, and he was fouled on the floor. Uh, this just in, L.J. Pick is a grown man. And he's only a 10th grader. I, I'm checking birth certificates, but that's a grown man right there. <laughs> I mean, his, his, his agility, his, his body movement, his body control is on another level than anybody you normally see in high school, even as a senior. Stacy's uh, got such a burst of speed. When yeah. he makes up his mind to go to the rack, it does not take him long to get there. No, and he's long. And you got to understand, this kid is only going to get stronger and better. And he's a state player of the year as a 10th grader. I, uh, the future is very bright. First shot popped out, front end of the one and one, wouldn't go. And that's Webb with the rebound, playing with the four fouls for Dorman. Now it's 33, Amavi Draper, and an offensive foul call away from the basketball on Dorman. He <laughs> got Draper, he absolutely just ran over. 22, Michael Wright. A little bit like a Dorman Gaffney football game there, which has also been known to be some good battles. He better be in the hole that time on the fourth and one. So here's Wright picked up by Webb. Yeah, I wonder if Gaffney will try to get Wright isolated with Webb, maybe try to draw the fifth foul on Curtis Webb. Here's Wright with a high screen from Kerry Williams. Williams rolled, but the pass wasn't there for Wright. So now it's McDowell nudged enough to call the foul on Dorman. As bad as he seemed to be hurt early, I'm glad to see McDowell back in the ball game. But he's a strong, he goes to that right hand a lot. He's a strong to the right hand, and he goes there and dips that shoulder. He, he initiates the contact, but he gets the call that time. Good to see McDowell back in the ball game, Stacy. He left with an injury. And when he went down in the third quarter, he was favoring the right heel, and it didn't look good. He was writhing on the floor in pain. And yeah. Back out there now, he looks healthy again. Not a good free throw shooter, though. So here's Trey Robinson for Dorman. He'll get it off to Brandon Pinkney, the six-foot junior. And a steal by Quinshaw Davis. Davis to right, open three, and it's short but rebounded by McDowell. McDowell floats in, couldn't score it. Off of Dorman, I believe, Robinson touched it out. And Quinshot Davis has a burst, too. You talk about burst, he's a tough kid, too. I saw him take a hit in that Burns game, that championship football game, and he literally crawled around the field for a few seconds after the hit early in that ball game, and he came back in a few plays later and made a couple of big catches, but he's a tough kid, and he's a leader, but look at LJ Peak standing by. Both of them stand at 6'4". They have a side, look at this, just playing above the Dorman head right now. They're trying to lob it in for Peak. But it was defended nicely by Dorman. How about Pinckney for three? No. 
And Wright, another rebound. You know, we talked about Kerry Williams being a solid role player for Gaffney. I think Michael Wright's in that same category. You know, these guys don't look to score, but we saw Wright knock down the only three-point shot I believe he's taking tonight. And, yes. you know, when the opportunity has been there for him to score, he has done that. But he doesn't look to score, Stacy, and that's a real asset. You know, when you've got quality players, everybody can't look to score. Oh! Yeah, there's one guy that can look to score, LJ That's Peden. Look at this good. Hey, that's what you, you got to get up to get down sometimes. He gets up, puts that down, and Nets have not recovered yet. My goodness. That's Michael Jordan esque on the high school level, my man. Oh, brother, the Tomahawk Jam. That first step was beastly. Take a look at this crossover dribble and watch him accelerate. Flight 10, take off for landing. Clear for landing. Wow. Nobody at Dorman. That was sudden. Nobody in Dorman thought he was going to duck that basketball. That's sudden. Nobody sitting next to you thought he was going to duck that <laughs> basketball. <laughs> LJ Peak, 4A player of the year. He's only in the 10th grade. Wow. Casey's, uh, he'll turn 16 this year. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Remember the name, friends. LJ Peak from LJ. Gaffney. Boy, a thunderous dunk. My goodness. That's him right LJ there. He's back to you, number 10. That, that cross on the first step, that's big time. That's huge. Stacy, we get a look at uh, the back of LJ Peak right here, and uh, I think it is safe to say that LJ Peak will be on the all hair team again this year. <laughs> oh, yes. For Got a little splash of color in the back. By a little center weekend. Now, uh, when he was in eighth grade, he dyed his whole hair that color. Oh, really? I didn't yes, see, sir, I didn't in eighth that. grade, okay. uh, his whole head was that color. This year, it's just a tip. Okay, just a tip. He's getting older, he's maturing. It's nice. He's mellowing. By the time he's a senior, the color may be all gone. Might be all gone. <laughs> this is a little special color. Let you know he can still party. Party in the back. Yeah. So, so Peak will exactly. be on the uh, 2012 All Hair Team for the Milo Center this weekend. And yeah, he'll be on all anything he wants to. Yes, he will. The first step. Yes, he will. 45-36. Gaffney looking to make it back to Columbia to play for the 4A State Championship next Friday night. Lexington had a slim lead over Aiken at halftime. Tonight in Florence, last we had heard, it was 15 to 11. Lexington leading at halftime. Score that bucket. I believe we got a three-point play coming up here for J.J. Arcega Whiteside. They are counting the basket, and that's the freshman. Speaking of young players, all the ninth grader, J.J. Arcega Whiteside of Dorman. A freshman starter on a team five for a state championship. That's pretty special. Yeah, look at this. Just a ninth grader right here. We talked about uh, Peak turning 16 this year. Well, Arcega Whiteside will turn 15 this year. <laughs> yeah, he's not driving yet. No, he's not driving yet. Wow. Good looking player though. 6'3. Ninth grader. Yeah, he knocked down a three early in the game for Dorman and has played good minutes tonight. Now LJ Peak will push it up here. Two-man game with Peak and T. Hardy. This is Hardy now. Watch the diagonal pass right here. Watch the diagonal pass. There's a steal. Daniels took it away, and Webb will throw it down with two hands. Two-hand slammer by the senior. Again, there's that man again. Every time Dorman needs something, they get it from the 12th grader. One of two on the team. Here he is again. Here he is again. Steal by Webb. Oh, rejected, but a foul. Oh, baby, I thought we had a block on the dunk attempt. He had evil intentions that time. Curtis Webb had bad intentions that time with a smaller man coming at him, number 12. Took a look right here. This is the previous play. Aaron pass right here. This is him when he went up for the two-hand slam. Yeah, Webb created that loose ball that was picked up by Daniels, who then fed it ahead to Webb for the dunk. And in his second time, a similar play. It got blocked, but you see the momentum changing a little bit right now. That trapping, that zone trap, the half-court trap employed by Dorman has affected Gaffney. And Stacy, you know, I wondered at the end of the third quarter if Coach Ryan from Dorman might ask Curtis Webb to stay on the bench for at least a couple minutes, you know, bring him in maybe at the six-minute right. mark of the fourth quarter. But with the season on the line, yeah. Coach Ryan left Curtis Webb in the ball game, and he has responded. Well, he trusts the senior. Again, that's what it comes to. He trusts him to play hard but not foul. It's going to come down to the Look at this twist. This is a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court pressure, and there's a frustrated gap. There. there is, again, a late whistle. A late whistle after the ball was gone. 
Gonna be called on JJ or Sega Whiteside. But it's no doubt this one, two, two, three quarter court trap is aggravating Gaffney. So Michael Wright moves back to the foul line as Gaffney head coach Mark Huff looks on. You can tell the tension increasing with every passing second in this state semifinal game. 45-43, and now the free throw good by Wright makes it a three-point Gaffney lead. Emerson, my friend, this could be a good four minutes. Coming up right here, it's going to get even more frenetic. Back iron for Wright, Webb the rebound. Big year for the Webb family, both Curtis Webb playing for Dorman boys and Callaweb from the Dorman girls team making it to the Milo Center. Big big year, big night for the Webb family. Loose ball picked up by Arcega Whiteside. He had it blocked. He'll go back up. Oh, and it danced off no good. And a rebound by Quinshad Davis. Good job by Arcega Whiteside. Just couldn't get it to go down. And Gaffney got a timeout call before LJ Peak collided with JJ Arcega Whiteside. 3.43 to play ball game. Gaffney by three, but Stacy, they opened up a double digit lead in the third quarter, and Dorman has clawed its way back to within three. And that's, again, coaching is about adjustments, but now it's about adjustments to the adjustment, Emerson. That three quarter court trap has been the adjustment that Dorman's made now. What is Gaffney going to do? And I'm suspecting. They're going to find a way to get L.J. Peak obviously, the ball, but maybe on the scoring end of this pressure. They got him out front handling the ball on the attack end of the pressure. If they get him on the back side, you may see some highlight reel dunks because it's open on the back on the back of the uh, pressure. They just can't seem to get the ball to the back side. They got to find a way to get L.J. Peak in the cracks in this pressure defense and let him create and do his thing. But they're having a hard time because nobody else on the team has stepped up. And this lead is, as you've seen, dwindled down to three points now. But watch the adjustment that Mark Huff is going to make. He's been here before, too. This is far from his first rodeo. But it's going to be an adjustment made with LJ Peak, who's been the best player on the floor tonight. Out of the timeout, Gaffney's basketball with the three-point cushion. Peak on the floor with Wright. Kerry Williams. Quinshot Davis and T. Hardy for Gaffney. For Dorman, it's Curtis Webb, Trey Robinson, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, Kavon Dover, and Maurice Daniels. Starting five on the floor for Dorman. Spin move, make it home. Quinshot Davis with the foul. That's a senior taking advantage of a freshman, Emerson. He gave J.J. Arcega Whiteside the inside move. Young man jumped. Davis all the while knew he was going to the, to the glass because he's been going to the glass all night. He spins towards the basket every time. Faked inside, went to the glass, got him on his hip. That's just a senior on a freshman. That's a mismatch. Play early in the game, Kyle McDowell. Right here, this is play. Watch it. He gets him. He fakes inside. No, had no intention of going that way. Gets the young man uh, on his back in his hip pocket and takes him to school. Took advantage. Yes, he did. Quinshaw Davis will play football at the University of North Carolina next year as a future Tar Heel. But he's got some unfinished basketball business to tend to. Stacy talking with some folks this morning about the fact that, uh, that we figured that uh, the way that Gaffney's football season ended, you know, may serve to motivate some of their basketball players uh, who are on the football team as well. You know, Gaffney was undefeated in football, but they lost in the state championship game to Burns. You were there, I was there too. I've never seen so many tears. I was on the sidelines. They, they, a lot of tears on that Gaffney football team. They were number two in the nation at one point. Right, and there was talk that, you know, this might be the best Gaffney football team of all time this year. Gaffney's won you know, more than a dozen state championships in high school football. So some vindication here. You can understand the disappointment and if they're able to win tonight and win next Friday night in Columbia, that would be some vindication for Quinshaw Davis and others. Gaffney fans in general, but they're not uh, to Columbia yet. 2.38 to play. 
Gaffney by five with the basketball. Quinshaw Davis picked up by Kavon Dover. And off to Peak. Holding the ball. 2.20 left to play. Michael Wright got the timeout call. So Gaffney able to run some clock right there. Take it down to 2.21 and take another timeout. Again, with no shot clock, they can run as much time off of the game clock as they like. Again, it's a long time to ask high school kids to maintain possession, especially on the you know, intense defense without turning the ball over. So we're going to see if now Dorman just, just stay back and play simple, basic man-to-man. -man. They don't have to foul. They have a long time to go before they have to get in foul mode. Take a look at that. The black paint. <laughs> Gaffney kids. It's black Friday night. Gold. No school tomorrow. That's right, no school tomorrow, and uh, whoever wins tonight, their students will be celebrating tonight. No question about that. And so, Stacy, you're dormant here. If you're dormant, you're down five. 221 to play. You got to get the ball back. It's a two possession game. Dorman has already committed 10 team fouls, so Gaffney's in the double bonus the rest of the way. Which is another reason to hesitate to foul. Just playing aggressive defense. Right, right was in trouble, and he threw it off the leg of Trey Robinson. Picked up his dribble in the corner. You cannot pick up your kids at home. Write this down. Do not pick up your dribbles in the corners against pressure. The sideline becomes another defender. L.J. Peak walks it into the front court, gets it to Kerry Williams. Williams turns and got it over to Davis. Outside for right, three-pointer, no. Tipped up, no good by T. Hardy. And saved from going out by Dorman and a travel call. He, he jumped. Couldn't keep his body control that time. Still not panic time for Dorman, though. They don't have to, still don't even have to foul yet. Gaffney's a little shaky with the basketball, by the way. So Peak puts it in to Davis. And Peak circles out to take it from Glenshaw. 140 left in the contest. There's a foul. Right foul by Trey Robinson. And I don't think that's what Thomas Ryan had in mind. No. If you're going to play foul, make that foul there, you could have made that foul a, a minute ago. If you're going to take that foul, you may as well continue to play pressure defense. I don't think that was intended. Roll on that first foul shot. Still a two-possession game. This next free throw becomes big because it'll make it a three-possession ball game. Keenan Littlejohn back in for Gaffney. He'll take the place of Kerry Williams. Right with the right foot in front of the left. Two for two at the foul line. Gaffney would love to see Michael Wright at the line the rest of the way. And the Gaffney lead is seven. Right wing, Robinson. No good. Now All you right. got to stop fouling. Right with the board and the outlet to peak. 120 to play. They're going to get it to right. Right is fouled by Daniels. And I looked over to Dorman Bench. And Coach Ryan from Dorman. You can just tell that's not who he, he wanted him right. to foul. Yeah, you don't foul the guy that's just made him. I think he's made his five out of his last six free throws. The last one didn't touch rim at all. I don't know if that's the guy you foul. Michael Wright back up at the foul line. Stacy Patel. Wright, as Mark Huff looks on here, Michael Wright is a Democrat. Stacy, you look at his alignment up there at the foul line. Left, <laughs> left, left of center. center. Left of center. <laughs> okay, now it's time to get up a shot. Got to be a good quality shot by Dorman. Can't be garbage. Got to be a good shot. Gaffney by nine. Coming up on one minute remaining. Double clutch and a bank shot good by Maurice Daniels from Dorman. And a quick timeout taken by the Dorman bench with 101 left in the ball game. Dorman within seven. And they still have a fighting chance thanks to this critical bucket right here by junior guard Maurice Daniels. Yeah, he's quick though. He's quick to the right hand, goes right back. LJ Peach. Goes up. Could have got an and one right there. A little contact. Could have got a whistle. And nice. that's uh, Daniels listed at 5'8", driving in on the 6'4", four inch 4A player of the year. 
LJP. Yeah, that was very big time. He's been an attack point guard all game. He's attacked the rim all game long. Here's a guy we hadn't talked about in the moment who I think you'll see get some shots up for Dorman the rest of the ball game. Watch 10, Curtis Webb try to get some threes up. That's the only chance Gaffney has now with a minute down by seven. Cheek and Curtis Webb, both members of the All-State team this year. The top 16 players in the state earned that award. And both Webb and L.J. Peak made it onto that team this year. And now we've got another Norman foul here. So this time it'll be Kerry Williams moving to the line. Smart coach at that time by Coach Thomas Ryan. He puts in number 23, Olden Fielder. 6'2", senior, hadn't played the whole ball game, came in for the purpose of fouling. So now to get some of his scorers in, in foul trouble, and he fouled the right guy because that first shot is errant by Kerry Williams. A lot of time to play. A lot can happen in 51 seconds, though. Fielder came in. He committed a foul and left. And left, that's right. And checked out. But the good news is he got to sit on the... Uh, Right by the coach. Coach, coach going Ryan's back in. Spot. Yeah, he'll be coming back in momentarily, we would assume. Webb going to the hole, yes. I think I just told you Webb was going to start getting some shots up. Well, he's going to get start getting some shots up. Now he got a foul. 50. 52-47. Two, two possession game again. 38 seconds left. And Norman, you know, will foul. They will stretch this 38 seconds out for as long as they possibly can. And, as long as Gafty's missing one of two, Dorman's got a chance to continue to close on this lead. Uh, Odin Fielder has the hate that, was, that wasn't a dead ball because he didn't get to check back in. For the next dead ball, he's coming in the foul. So, <laughs> so long as it's continuing action, he can't, he can't get in. He can't get on the offensive end of the floor. He's got to get on the defensive end. Right, so. right. They got a score they call a timeout. Great shot, Davis. A couple of big free throws for Gaffney. Watch Webb here. Here's Webb for three. Put it up strong. Lost out off of. Off of Dorman. Gaffney's ball. It's almost been addiction time here. LJP has been impressive everything else he's done tonight. Now he's got to be impressive from the free throw line. Makes two here. It's going to be all over but the shouting. And he misses the first. Maurice Daniels with a stutter step at the top of the key. Outside for Curtis Webb. Banking a three, wouldn't go. Michael Wright's got another board. And he's going to try to find some help. Had it poked away. And Wright takes it right back. How about that? Six seconds, five, four seconds, three. The Gaffney High School Indians are headed to Columbia to play for the 4A state championship. What a week from tonight, Gaffney. An eight-point winner over the Dorman Cavaliers tonight at the Bilo Center in the 4A Boys Upper State Championship game. Stacy Gaffney led by one point at halftime. We saw 10 lead changes in a back and forth ball game in the first half. Gaffney opens the second half with a 12 to two run and they don't look back. Both teams didn't quit. Both teams looked at each other down, didn't back down. Championship effort of both teams. Dorman's to be commended for fighting back uh, they played a tough, scrappy game, but Gaffney the better team, and they're going to put on quite a show, I think, next season over at the Colonial Life Arena. Looking forward to that. You'll get some of the highlights of how Gaffney pulled this win out. Congratulations to the Gaffney Indians. 55-47, Gaffney over Dorman, and Gaffney will get the winner of tonight's lexington Aiken game next Friday night in an 8.30 tip-off at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. Join us here on the South Carolina High School League Network for all the championship games next weekend and on your local Time Warner Cable System provider. That's going to wrap it up from here in Greenville.
Leon Sports producing tonight's game. You can purchase a copy, a DVD copy of tonight's game at the web address on your screen. It's schsl.tv. And that's going to wrap it up here in Greenville. My partner is Stacy Huff, and my name is Emerson Phillips. Thanks for joining us on the SCHSL Network.